Here's something that was a very common sight in the 1980s and 1990s, a dual cassette deck. These allowed you to make copies of cassette tapes for your own personal use, despite the fact that the music industry and electronics manufacturers couldn't agree on whether or not it was actually legal for you to do so. It's perfectly legal for the American consumer to make a copy of a piece of pre-recorded music for his or her personal non-commercial use. You enjoy it, you want to enjoy it, you want to listen to it, you ought to pay for it. The fact that it's taking place in your home is irrelevant. Robbery takes place in your home. That doesn't make it good. This deck is a realistic SCT-85 from 1989. It was also sold by Radio Shack under the Optimus and Memorex brands. And at first glance it looks pretty basic and nondescript. It's only when you look closer you notice that it says 4-track dubbing. And it has switch settings for 4-track high-speed dubbing. And looking in the 1990 Radio Shack catalog, Here's the listing for it, and we notice it says 4-track high-speed synchro dubbing copies your personal tapes four times faster. So whereas most other dual cassette decks only have high-speed dubbing, which copies your tapes twice as fast as normal, this one has quadruple speed dubbing. But instead of running the tape four times as fast, which would yield very poor audio quality, it achieves that feat by using a 4-track head, which copies both sides of the tape at the same time. This part of the head copies the tape going in the forward direction, while this part simultaneously copies it going in the reverse direction. Some decks use these four track heads for auto reverse playback, but in this deck it's purely for this four track dubbing feature. It does not have auto reverse. And although this four track dubbing system was a rare feature, the SCT-85 was not the only deck to have it. The realistic modulaire 2250 boombox also featured four track dubbing, as well as the ADWX-180 and several other models from Iowa which had what they called the all-track recording system. So let's try out this quadruple speed dubbing feature. I have this tape that came with the 1992 Lincoln Continental. On side one they talk about all the different features of the car and on side two they have music. So here's side one. I'll give you a little sample of what that sounds like. The remainder of this presentation covers the many features offered by Lincoln Continental. They're listed on the cassette label. And for your listening pleasure, there's a selection of instrumental music on the reverse side of this cassette. And here's a sample of some of the music on side two. Gotta love that Yamaha DX7 harmonica sound. To do the dubbing, I'll put side one of the Lincoln tape in this deck. And since this deck was also sold as a Memorex, I'll use a Memorex tape to record onto. So I'll put this tape in to make our dubbing. I'll engage the dubbing mode and the four track high speed dubbing. I'll press record on this side. It's not going yet, it only starts when I hit play on this side. And now we're doing our four track high speed dubbing. We only hear the forward side of the tape. It does not play both sides simultaneously, although it is copying both sides simultaneously. Okay, I think that's enough. So I'll disengage the dubbing mode. I'll rewind this tape that I copied it onto so we can hear what the forward side sounds like. Gauge. This displays information on oil pressure, battery voltage, engine coolant temperature, and fuel level. And if we turn it over, we should hear that music on the other side. So this is our four track quadruple speed dubbing copy 
of the Lincoln Continental tape. And now I'll give you some direct hookup comparisons of what the original tape sounds like versus what our quadruple speed dubbing copy of it sounds like. The bar graph indicates the approximate level of remaining fuel, while the digital gauge states the approximate amount in gallons or liters if the metric readout is selected. The bar graph indicates the approximate level of remaining fuel, while the digital gauge states the approximate amount in gallons or liters if the metric readout is selected. To check if this thing actually does copy tapes in four times the normal speed, I have this tape here, 90 minutes with Arthur Fiedler. So with this quadruple speed dubbing, this should take only around 22 and a half minutes to copy because it will be copying it twice the normal speed and it will be copying both sides at the same time. So it's 10 o'clock right now. I'm going to put this tape in here and put in a 90 minute blank tape and I have it all set to go for high speed 4 track dubbing and here we go started at 10 o'clock in 50 seconds and we're dubbing the tape yeah it's a little squeaky so at around 10.23, it should be done copying. Okay, that's it. It just stopped on the playback side. And even though the blank tape I was recording it onto still has a little bit left, you can see it did stop. So we'll end up with a little bit of blank tape on the end of that but not much and it is 1023 just as I expected so it did copy this tape four times as fast if it recorded both sides you can see it's at the end of side one so I'll turn off the dubbing mode and start side two and we should hear the second side of the tape playing yeah it's a squeaky tape but it's from the 70s And indeed, The Entertainer is the first song on the second side of the tape. So it did copy both sides of the tape. The one disadvantage of copying both sides of the tape at the same time is that whereas copying the second side would naturally wind it back to the beginning of the first side when it reaches the end. In this case, because it only required one pass of the entire tape to copy both sides, it's now at the end of side one and you'll need to rewind it to get back to the beginning. This is a pretty basic deck with mechanical piano key controls, but it does have Dolby B and C noise reduction and support for playback and recording of chrome and metal tapes. As far as how well this thing records normally, Here's a test recording I made on this Radio Shack High Definition Type 2 High Bias Advanced Cobalt Ferric Tape using Dolby C noise reduction. Your love is sweet tradition From Grandma's country kitchen The taste of pioneer Brings you home again A sweet inspiration For every generation In the spirit of Pioneer As it welcomes every dawn Pioneer The way nature intended it to be Pioneer Sugar Baking Michigan's memories Pioneer Sugar That special something 
sweet Makes every meal complete The way nature intended it to be Sweetening your community By a meal Like I said, this deck does not have auto-reverse but it does have what the manual calls continuous play. That's where you can put in two tapes and press play on both of them and when the first tape reaches the end it will automatically start playing the next tape. One odd thing is that the playback only deck also has an erase head, although it's not used for anything. The manual calls it a dummy head. Also, you cannot press play when there's no tape in the deck. There's a little sensor here which detects when the tape is inserted and then allows you to press the button. But you notice it still did not move the tape heads up into position because the power is not turned on yet. When I apply power, you'll see that it actually has a motor assisted mechanism which smoothly engages the heads. So that makes it a little bit more advanced than you might expect. However, there is no auto stop for rewinding or fast forwarding. There's only auto stop for a playback with this tension trigger here. On the back it has line input and output jacks as well as microphone inputs, which is a feature that was starting to disappear from tape decks around this time in the late 1980s. It was custom manufactured in China for Radio Shack and it has a date code of January 1989. The listed specifications are not very impressive, especially in regards to frequency response, but they're typical for an entry-level cassette deck of this era. The Wow and Flutter is rated at 0.15% WRMS, and that is accurate according to my test tape. The left side deck is measuring around 0.12 to 0.13% WRMS and the right side recording deck is actually slightly better coming in at around 0.11% WRMS. I was wondering who actually manufactured this for Radio Shack and unfortunately looking inside doesn't really give us any clues because the circuit board says realistic right on it along with the model number SCT85 and I don't know if this CAD means anything other than they used computer-aided design to create the layout of the circuit board. The mechanisms look like they are made by Tanishin except the flywheels are quite a bit larger than what they're using these days and the motors were made by Mabuchi. The belts are all original and still good. I did not need to replace any of them and the Dolby noise reduction chip was made by Sony. As for why this 4-track quadruple speed dubbing feature never really became popular, I can think of several reasons. First is simply the extra expense. You can see in the original catalog that a very similar model with all the same features except without the 4-track dubbing cost $20 less. And if you also didn't need Dolby C noise reduction, you can get this model for $50 less. Also, the ability to copy both sides of the tape at the same time is not really as convenient as it might sound because most music albums, at least back when this was introduced, were around 40 to 45 minutes in length. So a very popular thing to do was to take a 90 minute blank tape and put one entire album on each side of the tape, such as this one which has Graham Parker's squeezing out sparks on the A side and the Jay Giles Band Freeze Frame album on the B-side. But if you use this 4-track dubbing feature, instead of one complete album on each side of the tape, you would end up with only half of each album on each side of the tape. And by 1992, when this model was discontinued, instead of copying music onto cassettes from other cassettes, most people were copying music onto cassettes from CDs. Also, this model may not be the most reliable, because this is actually the second one of these that I purchased with the intention of making this video about it. The first one had hardly any audio coming out of one of the channels, even after cleaning the heads and the record playback switch and adjusting the playback level calibration trimmers. So I ended up sending that one back and getting this one instead, which thankfully is in fully working condition. Nonetheless, I enjoy trying out audio equipment with rare and unusual features, and this certainly falls into that category. 
Get a car, get a truck, and an SUV. Get a car, get a truck, and an SUV. Get a car, get a truck, and an SUV. 